My first Polestar 2 uh, had the home link button in the mirror, uh, but this new Polestar 2, uh, the model year 2022, Polestar decided to deliver it, the car without uh, the home link button. I think I read somewhere that the official statement from Polestar is that they don't they uh, see that customers don't use the home link button uh, and therefore they decided to just uh, leave it out of the car. Uh, it sounds weird for me because I use the home link button and I know a lot of other people who, who use the home link button as well. Uh, I think this is only for the European market that they deliver the cars without the home link button. But I'm not sure about that. Anyway, so my car doesn't have the home link button and that means for me to open the garage door or close the garage door I either need to bring a, a remote control and have it in the car or I need another solution, a smarter solution. Um, for me the home link button was really good because you had it in the, in the, in the mirror and uh, it, it always worked. Just press the button and garage door opens, press the button, garage door closes. But since I cannot do that anymore I had to find another solution and <clears throat> I was looking around and found a cheap solution which is the can you see it? iSmart Gate Mini. Uh, so this is a smart device that you connect to your Wi-Fi and uh, <clears throat> it apparently it works with uh, Google Assistant and it works with Google Assistant and Alexa and uh, if this then that if you use those kind of things. So in theory I should be able to say hey Google open garage door uh, and it opens and see the status in the app and so on. Uh, the iSmart Gate Mini is the cheapest version. They have Lite and Pro. Uh, I just bought this one. Uh, <clears throat> so uh, this video is not sponsored or anything. Just uh, I paid for this myself. Uh, and I'll drop a link in the comments below if you want to check it out. Uh, yeah. So there's not much to it. You, the box is just. Uh, let's see. It's just this uh, thing, and um, I also got the wired uh, sensor. You can use either wired or the battery powered ones, but I wanted to have a wired one so I don't have to think about the batteries. And that's it, the installation is pretty straightforward. You connect uh, this box first and set up the app and everything inside your house and then you can go out in the garage and connect it. Just follow the manual and uh, you should be good. And that is what I'm going to do right now and then we can just uh, see how the... I'm not going to show you everything because it's freezing outside and, and uh, I just want to do this as quickly as possible. But I smart gate they have uh, they have nice instruction videos and instructions uh, online so it should be pretty straightforward to to follow and uh, yeah we'll just see how it works and uh, I'll show you the integration in the car if there is any possibility to have Google open it from the car it should so uh, let's go outside and mount it Hmm. I think it connected somewhere around here. Okay, I've installed the uh, iSmart Gate Mini now, and it was. Um, Pretty straightforward installation. Uh, it was pretty cold outside, so I, had, I was freezing my butt off. So I ordered the um, 
the wired sensor kit and I think I made a mistake there because it would have been a lot easier to use the wireless one and the reason why I ordered the wire, wired kit uh, is to because it's it gets pretty cold here and I don't want to have another smart device to change batteries on uh, every now and then so a wired uh, sensor should in theory be a set and forget device but the issue is that iSmartGate uh, is sending this uh, sensor with I don't know, 2 meter cable and that's way too short when uh, the sensor has to be or as far as I understand the sensor has to be at the when the garage door is closed in the closed position the sensors are supposed to be mounted at the foot of the door and so you need a way longer and the device itself is where the motor is so you need a way longer uh, wire uh, so right now I have a semi smart garage door because it doesn't know whether it's open or closed uh, which is of course an issue so but it kind of works uh, let me show you um, that's the door Hey Google, open garage door. The garage door is already open. Okay, so that's uh, sounds like it knows that it's open, but it doesn't. Hey Google, close garage door. Can I have your pin? Four nine three seven four four. All right, closing the garage door. So that works pretty okay. Uh, let's uh, try to open and close it a few times and see what happens. Hey Google, open garage door. Sorry, I don't understand. Hey Google, open garage door. The garage door is already open. Oh no, it's already open. Hey Google, close garage door. Can I have your pin? Four nine three seven four four. Sorry, it looks like that pin is incorrect. Hey Google, close garage door. Can I have your pin? Four nine three seven four four. Sorry, it looks like that pin is incorrect. Come on. Hey Google. Close garage door. Can I have your pin? Four nine three seven four four. Got it. Closing the garage door. So my smart garage door isn't that smart. But hey, it's opening at least. Uh, so I have to figure out a way to or get a longer uh, wire and uh, have the sensor properly wired uh, so I can have the open close status correctly. But other than that, it seems to work pretty good. Um, yeah, so this was kind of an e easy fix for the missing home link uh, thing. And um, yeah, I'll drop a link below in the comments below. I'll drop a link uh, for this device if you want to check it out. Um, if you buy it through the Amazon affiliate link, I get some uh, 
yeah, you know, you you helped me out a bit, but uh, you don't need to do that. Just source it wherever you want. Um, yeah. So if you if you enjoyed this video, please consider to hit uh, like and subscribe and uh, comment below. That will always be appreciated. And uh, until next time, see you.